name is Nico Ocampo. I'm a DP and a partner here at uh, Axel Films. Uh, we're a turnkey video production company in Windsor, Ontario. Uh, we create commercials from broadcast to commercial uh, uh, branded content, advertising, um, to internal corporate videos. Uh, we like to dabble into more documentary work. That's kind of like what we were talking about earlier. Um, uh, but right now we're just kind of focusing more into like branded content and like campaigns. Uh, we work with a lot of agencies and like from Windsor to the GTA, uh, you know, they, we, one, we like that they supply the work, so that's good. And, uh, uh, we like that their ideas expand bigger than just video itself. Right. It's an entire idea. It's, you know, and it, it's not just like a one-off thing that we you just watch and you kind of move on. It kind of, you know, depending on the campaign, it can go longer, right? So, uh, yeah. Tell people really That's quickly it. what are some of the what are some of the big uh, companies you've done stuff for? Uh, so we've we worked for the um, what's it called? Uh, I'm trying to think right now. <laughs> what recently? Well, the Raptors, uh, the Toronto Raptors was one we were working uh, with Baron Championship Rings for that. Uh, we got to film the entire like ring uh, creation process. Um, and then we got to film uh, a lot of sports. We do a lot of sports, actually. So we were in Vancouver filming for Marine Drive Golf Club, uh, which was really cool. That, that was actually insane because when we were there, we, we filmed at, like the longest day of the year. It was like a summer, like the sun sol. I don't know something solstice, and uh, <laughs> and uh, we were we were there to film from sunrise to sundown, and, and it really, literally the sun rose like four thirty in the morning to like ten, so we were just there filming all day. But it was a, it was a good time, man. Like it was, uh, and we got to work with like uh, another drone uh, media company out there. Uh, Oh God, I, I'm so sorry. I forgot all your guys' names right now. I'm blanking. Uh, but you guys do great work. Uh, but they, but we, yeah, because uh, the, what's it called? The, we had to literally, it was a golf course. I was like right next to an airport. So uh, that's something that they were skillfully, like, you know, that's that's what they were skilled at. So it, it was good to be able to trust that side, you know, and hand that over to them. So, yeah. Uh, what else is there? I, I don't know, man. I can't really reflect. Like, I'm only thinking of what, what we have to do now before, like, <laughs> what we've done. So, For sure. uh, but yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, Brandon stuff. Like we did a, a Montana's, uh, broadcast commercial that was, that was, yeah. So. It's sweet, man. Know. Yeah, no, I think it's just yeah. good for people to hear that, especially if anybody's listening from Windsor. It's good to know, like, that you can work at a Windsor and still work with brands and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're willing to drive, for sure, and if you're willing to travel, that's the thing. Like, we love traveling. Everybody here, like, on our, like, as a, you know, as a hobby, we love to travel. Uh, my partner, Joe, like, went and, like, spent a whole month in Peru. Uh, and just being able to, that's another thing, too. Like, uh, even on our off time, like, just being able to gather footage and just shoot uh, for fun and then shooting for work. So it's it's a good balance. It's awesome, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's if you're living in a smaller town, not necessarily Windsor, and you want to work at a place like in places like Toronto, um, or if you're in BC, or I know Calgary actually does a lot of film work too now. But anyway, you can still live out. You just have to be willing to drive. It's as simple as that. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. But like, there's no, there's no like secret. It's just, just drive. But uh, <laughs> but some people, some people are, some people are some people I talk to are perplexed at the idea of like that you don't live in Toronto or mm-hmm. or that you're or that you have to move there and don't get me wrong I know the benefits if you live there in terms oh, yes. of but also yeah. it's just not affordable for what I want to do and for that sure. that kind of um, brings me to you mentioned you guys want to get get more into documentary. Why do you guys want to do documentary? What what is pulling you towards that? I think well, it's just the it's like the most organic way of storytelling. So um, and and it's very in, in terms of like uh, in pre production, you know what I mean? Like you're you're kind of finding it at the same time. There's there's not really you can kind of go either or, and then making the the it's basically making something out of nothing even though you have a direction you're still making something out of nothing and hopefully it kind of comes together in the end right um you know versus like 
all the other branded stuff, like everything has intention and uh, we're constantly, you know, trying to push for that intention, whether or not it actually like reflects that is a whole nother story, but we are definitely like, uh, everything is very precise. Mm. So that's, that's what's different. So moving, moving into documentary, that would be a, a pr- that'd be like a 180 for you guys then coming yeah, from- it's just it's just like a whole nother workflow you know you, you're you're just, you're you're still creative you're just thinking with your you know the other side of your brain i guess uh i mean you're <laughs> i don't know how to say that you know what i mean <laughs> no for sure uh, yeah but uh um, yeah no documentary is it's good i like the organic side too like you know there's uh in terms of like very planned shots you know where you're it's shot listed it's storyboarded and every Every shot has an intention. Um, when you're filming a doc, you know, you kind of have to keep that in mind at the same time. It is very organic, so you kind of have to be quick on your quick on your feet, and you have to be, like, um, you know, you have to think on the spot. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, you miss the moment, and, and then uh, that, yeah, so. Yeah, I know um, with docs, uh, one thing I've learned about docs is uh, I'm learning that you can do, you actually should do as much uh, the more pre-production you try, you like meditate and like For sure. um, you write out on your call sheets like what you plan on getting that day and why you plan on getting that. Um, and even before that process, even before you start shooting, like understanding your story uh, and like trying to guess the arc of that story, you know, depending on the type of film you're making, right? right. And um, I'm really trying to like lean into that trying to plan out um where i think the stories could go where the documentary could go and then when i'm in it it's it's still like kind of freewheeling and like you're kind of flying off the seat of your pants but in the back of your brain you have all this homework you did about your subject and like where they're heading what's the end like what's the intention of the film so you're shooting with good intention because i know when I first started doing documentary, that's something I kept making the same mistake was I kept thinking it was all off the cuff, but it's not. It's like you're constantly talking to the subjects. You're constantly learning new things and you need to apply that as you go along with it rather than just like, Oh, I hope it, I hope it turns out because that's where a lot of, it seems a lot of documentary uh, filmmakers make that mistake, even like seasoned ones you and I'm guilty of it too. Not that I'm a seasoned documentary filmmaker, but um, with my ex- limited experience so far, is just that you can't just find somebody that's interesting and just follow them. You can, but you risk. You run the risk of like having thirty days of footage at the end, yeah. and you're yeah. like so many doors. Way yeah. too <laughs> much. Too many. Way too much to go through. Way too many options, and you have to then figure out your story arc after the fact which a lot of filmmakers do. I know um, the one editor that I worked under, he specialized, um, he basically specializes in saving people's films. So these yeah. filmmakers go out and make these documentaries and then they don't know what to do with it because they're like, well, we thought we knew what we were doing, but we didn't really plan that out and we just have all this footage. Can you make a film out of it? So yeah, <laughs> there's a lot that's of people like, that... That's months, man. That's probably just months of just like culling through all the selects. And yeah, it's yeah. crazy. <laughs> and yeah. so so that's why I was just curious where you guys are coming from. Do you know what types of documentaries you're leaning towards? Or I don't, I don't know. Right now it's just kind of like an open thing. You know, um, we, we, we really need... We're still trying to, you know, we're... A, I think we're going to three years now where we're still trying to dabble into like what our niche is and like what direction we kind of wanted to go into or specialize in really. So, but as of right now, branded content seems to be like the, our, our, our go-to. So, yeah. yeah you guys are great yeah. at it. It means phenomenal stuff. I would love to see you guys uh, do some documentaries, do stuff you guys are passionate about. Yeah. Um, yeah, that'd be really cool yeah. to see. I mean, I, I think, well, the reason why, I mean, just this is just talking for me personally. I think the the cinematography approach for both is literally 180, right? Uh, 
in like in my opinion just because like in brand content you know you're when you're thinking about that story or the project you kind of have the intention like okay should i shoot it with this lens what what focal length and uh what should the lighting be the color palette all the way down to like the set design and art direction uh like the overall look of the entire piece also does it match to their brand like that's also another thing that you can put your ego into it and try to make this most beautiful thing but if it doesn't match to their brand then it's kind of like you know what i mean or if it doesn't match to the story of what they're doing for like like it doesn't really matter you know so um you know in terms of the documentary approach um there is you have all these principles that are in your head already they're not planned but you know they're there and they're kind of ready when you you need to use them so uh you know depending on the style or or the the i mean the the story or the project you know you'd have to make your decisions from there so i think there's kind of a beauty between you know being able to think last minute or critically i mean as much you can 100 percent put all your prep work in but i still i still think there's a level of uh you know organic in, into documentary work versus like shooting uh, branded content or commercials or stuff like that. So uh, yeah, and that's just kind of like the philosophy, right? Like um, that's kind of embedded, like where, uh, yeah, what, what, what decisions, uh, I don't know how to phrase this. Uh, next question, <laughs> I've liked out there. It's all good. Uh, um, yeah. No, I, I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. So you guys yeah. are basic. You're basically saying you're you would be excited to try out that more organic. For sure. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. Do you do you have like an idea in terms of like like what's your approach like? Well, like especially like when you come into like is it heavily intentioned where you're like okay I have to shoot with a 35 on this uh this certain angle this certain shot because it has to portray this certain emotion like or do you kind of just like off the like feel that this is the best possible option yeah it's a good question and i know it's something that i'm learning a lot right now because now that i have my first film like documentary under my belt um i learned a lot from that the intention of that film was to see if i can make a documentary that i'm you know somewhat proud of and that i could sell it and then the next documentary will be will have more intention like you're talking about like making like for the interviews or for certain characters only using like one lens or something because they're a certain way um so you know i'm getting into that now i'm with like with the documentaries that i'm working on right now that aren't out um I'm really trying to choose the style. Like I draw up a whole, I draw the story up on a, um, in a PowerPoint. Um, what's Apple's version? Whatever. Notebook. I don't know. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> anyway, in Apple's version, I can't remember what it's called. Yeah, it's called Notebook, I think. I don't know. Whatever. So I do like a, what I do now is I meet with a subject. I, I get a feel for them. And then I, I'm like, well, they remind me of this character in this film that I love or, or this type of thing. What's the mood? And then I go and pick out like still frames from those shots, like from favorite films based on yeah. my meeting with the character, with the subject. And yeah. then now I'm trying to really plan out like the style every day. I need to make sure I'm shooting in this same style. So the film has a cohesive that look. consistency yeah for sure so i'm have you, yeah have you heard of this uh website called shot deck yeah yeah you told me about yeah, it yeah. such a good one man lawrence sure dp uh he did joker he did hangover like possibly one of the best like search engines for dps uh, honestly like i draw like any thing that you know you think of it's it's, it's gonna surface there so it's it's pretty cool it's a yeah. cool tool i gotta start using that i haven't used it yet but you told me about it so i'm definitely gonna use that but as far as your question, yeah, I really believe like the more you have these different stages in your career and I yeah. think you have to get to a certain point where you're good enough that you can actually start picking the style because you know that you can get the style consistently on every shoot, um, especially with documentary because it is so off the cuff. It is it is hard to always have the same lights or the same control of your light or the yeah. same control of your subject because sometimes, you know, subjects are... F- can can either be really uh like on yeah you can't tell them to act either it kind of defeats the purpose no and some people do that and it's like to me it's kind of like 
that's not documentary. It's more reality TV. Uh-huh. Um, and there, we're really, it's really, there's a, there's a lot that, that question you asked me just brings up so many different things. There's so uh-huh. many options these days, I think, that me and you have that other filmmakers that have taught me documentary didn't have. Like, there's so many different genres of documentary, too. Uh-huh. Right? And there's so many different ways, and they're all kind of blending and mixing and, like, turning into yeah. these hybrids, which is yeah. really fun. So the types of films that I'm trying to make now is I really want to make sure I have my look locked down. I want to make sure that I am like I've picked I've picked um, some lenses that I'm only going to shoot that film with those lenses, or mm-hmm. if it's just one zoom lens. Um, you have a favorite lens. Do I want to even do interviews, or is it all going to be right. verite? Like, right. just you know, these are all things I figure out now before I'm filming, which I didn't do. Um, with the graffiti, well, the graffiti, the last one I did, I, I knew I wanted to keep it easy on myself because I was doing everything by myself. So I was like, I'll do interviews, standard documentary interviews, and then I'll have verite scenes and I'll mix those together. So I think in the, so what you're saying is, yeah, I, I now I'm trying to do a lot of pre-production. So yeah. I eliminate the chaos, like um, as much chaos when I'm actually filming in the field. Because there's enough chaos as it is when you're doing documentary, so if you can eliminate as um, as much as that as possible, that's it. Like, it's golden. Yeah, yeah. What uh, I was gonna say, yeah. What what lenses do you primarily do? You default to them, or is it like a certain characteristic that you choose when working with them? Um, I do like I do like a more clean, like clinical look. I'm finding. Um, I do kind of like uh, like the Roger. Deacon's uh, philosophy about trying to make it look as real as possible because yeah. it is it is documentary so I feel like yeah. it should be real life but uh, yeah but I also like when things look super like soft and and uh, I guess cinematic can be clean too but you know what I mean like uh, more yeah. uh, more art more art style mm-hmm. um, I think yeah. there's a place for that but I do like a more clinical look so I do use like on the last film, obviously, I, I think I, I used the 24 to 105 the whole time. Uh-huh. Um, and an 11 to 16 for, like, gimbal shots or my uh-huh. second, or my second, uh, my B camera for interviews. Um, but I like that, I like that look, that lens is, is pretty clinical looking. Um, the flares are consistent. Um, I'm actually, like, I'm, like, I would like to get a different flare look like i i don't want so much flare <laughs> like i yeah. i just like i i want to find my own style so i guess to answer yeah. your question i'm still finding what i ultimately want to want my things to look like so i'm still finding that i haven't found it yet but yeah. i do like zoom lenses for documentary just because of the flexibility but i can see myself yeah. picking some like just using maybe two lenses like two primes uh, i yeah. love it i love the 24 uh, so I think I would probably, I could probably shoot a whole film, I think on a 24 millimeter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 yeah or, same. I, I, I generally kind of stay within the 16 to 40 millimeter range. Uh, personally, I feel like there's, um, what's it called? There's your, there's more immersion, if that makes sense, because of the lens distortions. Like, um, it's naturally where our eyes kind of you know, tend to be, I feel like anything 50 and over, it kind of puts you, it's, 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 it's a very intimate, like, look, yeah. you know, because you're so close, but even when you're so far away, you're shooting far away, the, because of the lens compression, it almost just makes you automatically be an observer to what you're looking at. Yes. So, yeah, so, like, I, and because of, like, the, the style that, like, you know, we shoot a lot of sports, we shoot a lot of, uh, so, shooting at the 16 to 40 millimeter range is and adding that movement allows like the audience to kind of just like be immersed uh you know within that reality that you're kind of creating so uh that's that's where i like to go but uh you know that's cool i primes are my way to go uh just because like um yeah the zoom does have its efficiency but uh, yeah primes like me a good prime (laughs) yeah i think it always comes down to like what's your project and if it's a documentary for example like what kind of documentary is it is it going to be an interview based documentary then you'll have the freedom to use prime lenses all day long 
if you're a run and gun, it you can still. I know guy like directors that wanted me to use prime lenses, and I've used them. But it does make it harder for me in a real yeah, chaos in a cha in a chaotic yeah. situation. Like I, if you're running well, run and gun, one, you're a one man band for sure. Yeah, like I had I was working with a director who I really like, but he likes to use prime lenses, which makes my job hard because the types of films he make are really. Like, they involve, a, like, a lot of people. Like, one of the films we were working on, it was for Vice, and it was about a rapper, and he was playing at a festival. And, like, we were yeah. jumping from inside of his festival tent, which was crazy with all these other rappers, and, like, yeah, jumping on... Tight. We were jumping on, like, golf carts to ride to the stage, and then we were on stage, and all I had was... I think I was shooting, like... He wanted me to shoot, like, 50 millimeters, which is pretty tight. And yeah. I did it. It looked cool, but it really made my job hard. When I wanted yeah. to get like a wider shot, like I had to run, yeah. the f I had to run the fuck back, <laughs> like it's like like a hundred meters, like so it's like so yeah. you really have to. I think that's why it's so important to pick these things before you start filming. And yeah, if and if you know the sure. if you know the film is going to be chaos, I would mm -hmm. rock it. I'd rock a twenty four to seventy. That's you probably never go to seventy. That's the thing, you know, yeah. but. You know, you rock a zoom lens. If you got more time, a little more flexibility, uh, maybe dealing with not so many characters uh, mm -hmm. or subjects rather, then you could use primes. So just depends on the situation, as always. Yeah. But so, what other questions you got written down? Question. Oh, I mean, uh, I didn't really have any questions. It was just like, yeah, um, what, like, what draws your inspiration from? You know, like, where do you get your inspiration? Like, where do you get your style from? Like, for me, I, what's it called? Yeah, um, tell me. I have, like, a film and visual arts background. So I kind of, like, learned a lot of my inspiration from, like, old paintings or, like, old classic artists. Uh, there was uh, Edward Hopper. He's a really good painter. And, like, uh, Caravaggio. Like, their paintings or, and their art to me is, like, they have a very cinematic look. Uh, and if you apply in the cinematic realm, it kind of like like it kind of looks like the, uh, like a painting almost. And so like I try to aim for like um, every paint, every frame of painting almost. If if uh, you know I, what's it called? I, I try to aim for that as much as possible. But whether or not if that like that actually translates, that's a whole other issue. But uh, yeah, like where where do you where do you come from? You know. um, well, I w want to comment on what you said. I think that's really good. Uh, I mean, you're pulling from the classics. I don't know those painters, but often I think of like Rembrandt in terms of yeah. lighting and stuff like that, but I don't look to that as inspiration necessarily. My inspiration really comes from when I meet a subject and they start telling me about who they are and what they've been through. Right. Then yeah. I can take that information and then I'll, I'll watch movies that remind me of this person and then right. i will take elements uh from those films that remind me of that person and apply it to the film so for example the one i'm working on right now it's about an he's a it's about a mosaic artist uh -huh. and um he is a very complex subject and he's gone through a lot in his life um and a lot of ups and downs and it remind he reminded me of um, the film Pollock Jackson Pollock. Oh yeah. And um, the film that Ed Harrison stars in. I don't know if you've seen that film, but it's the story of his, of Jackson Pollock's life and his art. And he this the character in this film that I'm working on were really reminded me of him. So. I knew right away that the film was going to have a lot of like yeah. shadow and a lot of like light through natural windows. I wanted it to look very uh -huh. moody. I wanted to to really have this weight when you're watching it that it's things are like hard for this person. And um, so I so that's where I'm pulling inspiration now. So it starts with the the subject and then I go and look like through a library of you know movies to try to figure out where right. I can pull from. And then the rest is kind of history. You just, I just go with my gut instinct once I have my plan. That's, That's good. Yeah. yeah. That allows you to be very versatile too. Cause now you're expanding to like 
so many different styles, you know, and, you know, because your references are so many different movies, you know, you're kind of testing the waters, you know, you go into that route and you go into the other. So that's, yeah. that's pretty cool. And yeah. that's, that's something I had, I, you know, this about me, like I didn't watch a lot of film when I first started, which ended up being a huge like crutch for me because I didn't really, I wasn't able to relate to other filmmakers. I wasn't able to, um, you know, when you're trading creative ideas and stuff, people reference things, mm -hmm. right? And I didn't know the references, um, so it wasn't it wasn't doing me any good. Um, but I guess it was good to go through that to know that it wasn't it wasn't good to do. <laughs> like it was a lesson learned. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, but yeah, but anyway, so you find yeah. so you find your inspiration through paint so through painters then. Like, well, painters, but, like, um, it's not like I'm trying to make it look like the, like, you know, texture and all that, like, to make it look like a painting. It's almost as if, like, um, if I can aim to make, like, one frame stand alone, like a photo, then, like, you know, it can basically tell a fraction of the story already. Mm -hmm. And, like, if you put all those pieces together, that's what ultimately creates, like, you know, the story. And, uh, you know, it's not like, um, yeah. Yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, if, if, if I could do that, then it feels like I'm doing my job correctly, right? Like, cinematography isn't just, like, you know, the number of good shots within a project. It's it's the consistency. It's the whole thing. So, uh, yeah. What, what made you want to do cinematography and not directing or editing or any of the other jobs that you could do? Yeah. Uh, well, so I actually didn't even know I wanted to be a cinematographer, like even in film school, I was just kind of in it. Um, but the medium that I was kind of focusing more was, uh, photography. So I started doing, yeah, I did a lot of photography then. It was like, for me, it was like, uh, it was, it's one, it's quicker because there's an instant satisfaction when you have an image in your head. And so like when you you know whatever you're trying to portray it's like you know one click of a button it's like there it is that's what exactly what you've envisioned um there was drawing and the, like sculpting and all these other things but like whatever i envision doesn't necessarily like translate through my hands you know i was never that skillful into doing that so i think photography allowed me to just be like yep that's exactly what i was thinking and then whatever you put in frame it's like that's it's even closer but then uh you know uh movement is 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 uh you know you can tell like a, a bigger story with with uh you know through cinema than just for photography um yeah but even then like there's still like i still really i'm still very passionate about photography especially like street photography um you know i think there's a lot of like there's a lot of story elements within like a, a photo that's you know taken you know through street photography it's like uh, it's literally just like a moment in time. There's no intention in terms of like, you know, like you're trying to aim for something. It's like, I would say it's like the organicness of it is what makes it really um, satisfying, I guess. Hmm. I butchered that sentence, man. No, no, it's, it's all good, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, the or the or the idea that you can just capture a little moment that something real that yeah. wasn't necessarily planned. Mm -hmm. But at the um, same time, you're you're still applying all those like principles that you have. You know, you're still looking for architecture. You're still looking for lines. You're still looking for, you know, the right composition and and uh, color. So, uh, all that applied within that one shot. So th there's that instant satisfaction. Whereas, you know, like if you're any other medium, you would have to slowly apply it and build up to it. So, mm. yeah, yeah, no, that's true. It the same rule. Yeah, the same techniques apply. Uh, just because it's just because it's organic, the the the, 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 the and the timing too, you know, yeah. to just be at the right moment and just like hopefully you get it, you get it. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. What what drives you? Like you know, you guys come into work every day there. What is the driving force to keep creating for you? Um, uh, that's I don't know. That's a good, that's a good one. Um, because I don't know what else to do be honest i literally have not like you know what i mean like if i thought of i i think about this a lot like if i were to go blind right now i'm literally the most useless being in the world i have nothing else to offer you man <laughs> like <laughs> actually that's not true i started doing the bookkeeping so maybe i could 
be a bookkeeper. Oh, but then you need eyes for that. No, you got. You can use Braille. Uh, oh, right, Braille keyboards. <laughs> you figure it out. Yeah, yeah, we'll figure it out. Yeah, no, that's what's actually. So that's another thing. You and I, like, you know, as much as we're filmmakers, it's like we're also entrepreneurs. We run our own business. That's the one thing I do, um, like, appreciate is that we are able to kind of just take, like can do anything really you know like we have that mindset to to be able to dabble and wear all the different hats so yeah. uh, that's really good no it is I'm good not worried. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah yeah i was just curious because like um you could you could do other things with your time you know i mean it's mm-hmm. like why do we choose to to do something like this because it's not easy obviously yeah. Um, but I think, well, ultimately, I think we like storytelling. We like hearing stories. We like telling them. You yeah. know, I like, I can't just listen to a story and be like, oh, what do the curtains look like, though? Or like, I, I need to be able to, like, picture the whole thing before, like, you know what I mean? I like being able to picture that. Yeah. And uh, I guess that's where it sounds from. Yeah. No, it's, it's, uh, it's a good question to ask yourself. I ask myself that a lot. I have two answers to that question. I, one is I don't want to have to do the other jobs I've done in my past. <laughs> yeah, same, Sec- same. I know how. Sh- I know man, how sh- That's that's yeah. the one thing too. I think that's the number one thing as filmmakers. Like every job, every project is always different, so you approach it very differently. Um, the energy is always different. The type of people, you know, the network, like the amount of people, the talented people that you meet along the way too, is, is also really cool. Um, yeah, I can't just like stand and try to make a car part for yeah. the rest of my life, you know. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, I've like I, it's, yeah, it's, I re- yeah, I respect respect anybody that has to do that job and uh, I know that we all have different uh, we all are brought into this world and with different circumstances and not everybody has the opportunity sometimes to do this so I, I recognize that I do have a great opportunity to, to do something I love and that's I need to hold on to that tight um, so that's the first one I don't want to have to work crappy jobs that I don't and crappy jobs to, and what I think a crappy job is for myself not to anybody else but I don't want to have to work those crappy jobs. And the second one is, there is, in, there's nothing like, specifically why I love documentary, there's nothing like when cinema and real life come together. And you right. don't have to do much to get it. It's just like a gift, like from the gods. It's like, you, here, it's like here's a great, here's an amazing scene and the sun is perfect and the audio is great and it just yeah. happened. And when you go and watch that back, you're like, man, this is such a great moment in time. And the next best part about that, not only that's a great moment in time, but now I get to share it with people and mm-hmm. they can experience that too. It's like going back in time. It's like a little time machine. Yeah. I was actually ta- I was having a conversation with like, uh, same thing about, uh, similar so- uh, conversation with a buddy. Uh, basically like when you look at a photo, it's like you, you remember the moment rather than, like, the actual photo or, like, the technical, of like, you know, the whatever the concept of the photo or video, like, that, that whatever the shot is, like, it doesn't really matter. It's just, like, what you almost felt when you were there. So, like, when I look at, like, past projects, it's, like, yeah, everyone can look at the technical and, like, see a good commercial, but it's just, like, I know how much work that went into that, you know, that's how I kind of, like, look at it. Or, like, even if you're looking, like, at photos or anything, you know, you draw from those memories. Um, I don't know how we do that. It's like, yeah. It's a beautiful thing, and I'm just, yeah. I'm just glad we have it. So that's, those are the reasons why I am so like happy to come down in my office and work and like, man, like, I've always wanted to make films. I, I it's funny how I like, there's so many stages you have to go through, and like, obviously, I think I'm gonna keep learning and making mistakes and learning from those mistakes until the day I die. Uh-huh. Um, but it's a really fun place to be right now. Um, because like hard work and like practice are starting to meet and like with, with like story, there's the, there's the art side of the filmmaking, then there's the technical side. And for the first time in like my career, I feel like they're coming together where I'm understanding principles of, about things I didn't understand before. Mm-hmm. So, but, um, yeah. How do you feel right now? Like in your career, like, do you find that you're on a good like current that you're just like you're running with things things um like it's, technical yeah. and creative are meeting like you're not struggling to have to learn the certain basics 
Well, right now, I think uh, we're at we're at the stage where we're kind of mending business with art. You know, like art is continuous. Like that's what's keeping us going. The 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 freedom to be able to create and do what we want. You know, and and travel. Like we're kind of using our our business as a vessel to do all the things that we're passionate about. Um, you know, so we're we're going to try to keep incorporating like those two elements together. But like, yeah, you still have to strengthen like the other aspect, like the business, strengthen the business, strengthen the, your creativity side. And, you know, they kind of work together and hopefully it'll get you there. Does that make sense? No, that does make sense. Yeah. I, I want to ask you like for any new people, like beginners into filmmaking, if they're at the university here, like I want to ask you some basic questions about cinematography and like, uh, camera work in general like what are some of the big like amateur mistakes that you can make in terms of um in terms of like lighting if you're lighting. if you're setting up like an interview what are what are like yeah what are the, the you know those same pitfalls that people always fall into i mean i don't think there's, I feel like I'm still making those those mistakes though, you know. Um, I, I don't think there's like a general rule to like lighting, other than, um, you know, try to put a little bit more of a, more motivation into it. You know, like you wouldn't put a light here when like it's just like this ominous random light that's like illuminating your face when there's no window, there's no nothing. You know, like try to put a little bit more motivation, more motivation into it, so that when you do watch it. Your, your audience feels more immersed into that reality that you're kind of creating, you know, um, balance out, like not everything has to be high key in my opinion. Like I like personally, uh, a good balance between light and shadow. They kind of like work together to create the mood rather than just like try to eliminate, you know, and, and that's the thing too. Like you, you learn a lot of like photography principles and techniques and, you know, it doesn't really translate the same way into cinema so you know because i think with cinema in terms of lighting you're you're kind of you know replicating uh real life not you're not trying to exaggerate i mean you could it depends on like the reality that you're kind of creating but you you know you're you you want to try to make it as real life or to whatever the universe that you're kind of creating you you want to make that as real and as consistent as possible if that makes sense that makes um, perfect sense so yeah be intentional when you go say you have an interview in a living room there's right. a window light in the front there's a lamp beside it like you can decide is this going to be motivated by by sunlight yeah, or is it going to be motivated lamp. by the lamp light and close the sun shades so yeah you're just intentional about your lighting and i think that's a really good point because that's something that i had to learn when you look at a situation, when you look at a scene, or uh, uh, whether it's documentary or, or a commercial, I mean, the principles are the same. It's like, what is motivating the light, and uh, yeah. where is that coming from? So, and you just have to pick. Yeah, there was a, there was a quote that I, I I read like I don't even know where it came from, but it was like uh, like for the place, light the places, not the faces. If that makes sense, like oh. if you can light. If you can light the place, like or the the location, and you know you can, and then at that point you can just set your subject to where they need to be, and then that way you're more immersed into that setting rather than just you know concentrating on lighting the face per frame, and then you're kind of, and then at that point your lighting is it's like inconsistent. So, um, you know, I mean, obviously there's you're gonna have to tweak things a little a bit depending but i'm just speaking very vague right now no that's good light light the place so light the places not the faces i like that that's good man what what else did you uh write down i'm curious what you what other topics you wanted to talk about um i don't know like here's the thing as a as a filmmaker like when when are you really satisfied (laughs) you know like when do you when do you feel like oh that was a I did really good that day. Uh, like that was a really good shot or whatever. Like when when do you actually feel satisfied? Because to me, it's always just like very. <laughs> really, all depends, I guess. Like on yeah. the situation, there's One diff- budget, the budget, the the client, the you know the the project itself, the subject. Like it all, it all depends, right? So yeah, no, it's a good question, and I think the satisfaction can come from different places, and I also think 
you get different satisfaction depending on where you're at in your career. When I was first starting out, the only satisfaction I wanted was to pay my bills. So I didn't really care so much about the, like I did want it to look good as best, whatever that meant back then, but I wanted to be able to pay my bills and I was like, that will be satisfying. Then after I was able to pay my bills, I wanted it to look better. So I needed it, I needed to look, so whether I was making good money or bad money, it had to look, sorry, so I still had to be making enough money to pay my bills, that had to be satisfied. Then I needed it to look good, that was the next satisfaction. And then the thir- then now the place that, the next place I got to was satisfaction from the client or the director I was working for. Like if they sent me an email the next day and like, just looked at the footage, it looks so killer, everyone loves yeah. it. And I'm like, yay! And I got paid, so I got paid, Right. they love it, I'm getting praise, that's great. And now I'm finally getting to the point where, it's funny, like the money is taking a back seat. I do care about making money, don't get me wrong, but it's not like at the first, it's not in my, it's not the first thing I think of now. Um, I still like, I wish I didn't care so much about getting the praise, but I still do. But I'm, I'm getting to a point where I really want it to, my films to be consistent from yeah. audio to lights to inter- to my interview questions to the way I treat my like the my relationship with the subject like yeah. I really just want to tighten up all those bolts like your workflow basically yeah, yeah I want to be like this really simple like I want everything to be simple and tight and and understood so that's what I'm really working for that's what the satisfaction I'm trying to get right now and obviously that's a that's a life pursuit and so I'm really I really feel like that's the good place to be like I should be able to finish a film be like you know what like I did I did a good job regardless of the outcome and all of that yeah for sure yeah because I think we all know when we create something good or bad and it is it's in the eye of the beholder, you know, can't please everybody. So I think you should try to please yourself in the end of the day. What do you think? Yeah. Uh, same. <laughs> like very, it's very, very much the same. I think like as artists or film, like, you know, that's, that's something we all have to deal with. Um, and just kind of like putting your ego aside and say like, what is best for the project or, you know, cause you know, I'm, I'm still kind of struggling with my satisfaction in, in like whatever I envision in my head, I want it to, you know, come through you know and uh whether or not it's like i have achieved that is that's where i kind of beat myself up it's like oh i was so close if i had like another hour if i had like another 10 minutes like it would have been so close to like looking like that or you know or or if like you know there's many like other factors but obviously you got to stop beating yourself up like per shot or or, you know yeah so well the nice thing i don't know i haven't done as obviously as much corporate stuff as uh, commercial work as you, but um, I know with documentary, what's nice about it is you do kind of get lost in the scenes, especially because I work by myself a lot of the time with my own films. You get lost and you kind of forget about, like, once you get your technical down and practice, like, you do forget about this stuff. It just becomes natural, and you kind of just get lost, which that's why I like documentaries. You forget that you're making mistakes sometimes, which is a good thing because yeah. if you're always beating yourself up over every shot, it's like you'll never you'll never get the film done. Mm-hmm. Sorry, oh, that was my timer. I'll set another five minutes. I think we're good. <laughs> yeah, no worries, man. I think yeah, this is this is definitely a good talk. Uh, you know. Yeah, let's do five uh, more minutes here. Hold on. Yeah, I want to. Um, so yeah, you you were saying you do you f- it's you find it hard to be satisfied because you are so. Um, you want things in such a way, right? Yeah, you have I such mean, a like, vision. That's the thing. Like you're, you're trying to be precise, and that almost part is what like almost like, just kills you, right? You're just like I was almost there, kind of thing. So um, I think yeah, that's that's just literally like it's such a simple thing. But I think if anybody can just get over that, I think your workflow and like you know what makes you keep going is just it's it's gonna be a lot easier, you know? Yeah, that self. Yeah. That self. Like we all, I do that too. I think we're all guilty of it. And I think any good um, artist does do that because, I mean, if you're not hard on yourself, you're not. No one's going to be as hard as on yourself. Yeah, you're, than, you're, than you're you. your worst own critic, right? And, and like, you just want growth. That's the thing. And it's like we're, we're all trying to grow faster. So being patient, 
you know, time and practice, that's the one thing that we all kind of have to, like, just be accustomed to. And, like, uh, yeah, stop beating yourself up, really. Yeah, patience yeah. is a big one for me. I'm, I'm really trying to slow down and, like, not be so eager, not to have the, that eagerness to want to just put something out, but to yeah. actually, like, let it ruminate and, like, steep and, like, sleep on things, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. and I always feel better after I take my, take a little more time to think about it or to let it sit like an edit or whatever. Yeah. So patience is a huge one for sure. Cause I don't know about you, but like, it's really hard sometimes. Sometimes you just, you're so excited to show people, but it's not ready. <laughs> it's like, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um, what else did you write down? I like your, I like your, uh, your things. They're good. You should do this. My questions? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like well, I, I mean, I just, I like film talks in general, man. Cause like, yeah. uh, you know, people generally talk about the, the, the technical aspects of it, you know, it's like, what diffuser should I put on this? Or like, you know, it's, and, uh, it's, it's good to know, but like, I like to know like your why, like the, your philosophy on the things, because it narrows down like why you're doing it in the first place, you know, like why does it need to be diffused or in, 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 you know, in that way, or like, why does it need to, you know? So if you, if you narrow down like your, your philosophy or your why you kind of, it's easier to make your decisions. You know, you're a little bit more aware of your intentions. Yeah. So I agree with that. I think that's a, that's a, like for, I think at your age, like that's a really healthy and mature place to be. I know I wasn't there. And, um, it's good to ask why all the time for sure. Someone who, yeah. who's there. That was Josh. I don't know what he came in. I mean, he just came in and said something. I have no idea what he said. Um, but yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's. Uh, yeah, I think people like you know, and, and we have a really good community in Windsor. I think definitely like we should be talking more about this kind of stuff, you know. And uh, yeah, and that's the one thing like why we kind of chose Windsor. One is cheaper, but it's also you know, um, it's everyone here has this like persistence this kind of like you know um this mindset where they 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 feel a little bit uh i don't know a word for it but like everyone's a go-getter in wizard you know so it's especially in a film industry like i'm I'm pretty sure if if we all kind of just come together and do these a little bit more often and collaborate um we could ultimately create an industry like a like proper film industry in windsor you know a lot of people like coming from the u you know they go to toronto and that's where the industry's at right there's more resources you know there's a lot more people to network with and the projects are there obviously because you know that's where all the production companies that's where all the agencies are at you know that's that's where all the work's at really um and uh but if we can start here and like build something you know even if it's small like that's already a good step for winter so yeah and i think like um vincent at the uh uh at the film festival i think they're doing good stuff at our film yeah. festival yeah for he, sure. i like him i think he's doing a great job and like um it's definitely, uh, it's come a long way in the last 10 years, let's face it. Um, uh-huh. And I think the more people, I, I, I want to say too, I don't have anything wrong with like moving to Toronto. I think it's great. I just think it's, uh-huh. is it right for your move and what you're trying to do in the industry, right? Uh-huh. Because there's a whole other way to do it, the industry in Toronto than what you do out here, right? Like, I just don't need it, you know? Like, I don't... Yeah. I don't really need it to do what I want to do. Like, ultimately, I'm just trying to tell stories about people. Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to tell stories about people so people yeah. are everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't really need to go there. I'll go there if I have to. It's not a big deal. But, um, yeah, man, I do appreciate this. We'll definitely... Let's do another one, and we'll... Uh, sure, man. We'll allow it to go longer. Um, but it's funny. We cracked through. This is, like, 53 minutes right now, so... Yeah, that was, that was easy. Fast. I could probably talk. Than he, yeah. I could talk for probably another hour, but um, yeah, let's do it yeah. again. I appreciate it. I loved your philosophical questions about why and film. I think that's really important, and I agree with you. I love gear talk, but it's it's good to talk about why we're doing what we're doing and intentions. Yeah. That's really cool, man. I really appreciate it, and appreciate I love what time, you guys man. are. Yeah. I love what you guys are doing over there, and uh, it's just awesome work all the time. And Same, uh, it's super cool, man. All right. Okay.
See ya. Yeah, thanks for having me, dude. Okay, talk to you later. <laughs> See Bye. You, dude.